But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear. Please let me know if you have any problem from your side. We have a technician now today helping us. We have Jibreel and we have in the lighting and decoration in the studio, we have Israfil. And in case something wrong happened and for one of you, we have Azrael. And I found today a very interesting video. Actually, I just after I, you know, I decided to go live YouTube suggest to me because I was searching for the pictures, you know, for the picture I put in the thumb. So I typed the word Ustad and then I got this video. And this video is called How to Get Rid of an Anxiety. That's deep. And Sheikh and Ustaz Abdul Samud is going to teach you how to get rid of an anxiety. And the funny is this video have English subtitle, which is even make it more funny. I said, I don't know what he is talking about, but you know, let me click. Maybe there's an English there. And there was English. <laughs> oh boy. So the Sheikh Samud, peace be upon him. I don't know what he is wearing. Uh, he is teaching the Indonesian how to fight an anxiety. He, Sheikh Samud, how do you do that? I'm really curious. Layang di udara, datang takut, datang ngeri, datang cemas, datang takut mati. Tidak ada yang bisa menenangkan kecuali zikir mengingat Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Makanya orang yang naik pesawat. That's it. He solved the problem. You are suffering. You know. You are afraid from airplane, you fear death, you have an anxiety. What do you do? You remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I have a question to Mr. Abdul Samud, who for some reason he moved his, his mouth to the wrong direction. As long Islam, by remembering Allah, we can fight anxiety. And actually he mentioned, like in the video, you, have, you say, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. You know, actually, he said, wa bihamdihi. You do not even know how to say it. Wa bihamdihi. It, uh, this is how it should be said. Bihamdihi, not bihamdihi, you idiot. So, you say, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. And then your anxiety is gone. I want to show the Indonesian that those people are a fraud and they are laughing at you. How come, who is the one who was remembering Allah more, you or Muhammad? Did Muhammad himself try to commit suicide? If this is how easy to fight the anxiety is just to remember Allah. Okay, we got a point there. But now we have a prophet of God who supposedly a prophet of God and who remember Allah more than the prophet of God, peace be upon him, 
the most beloved prophet to Allah and his shin, Muhammad. So look what Muhammad, what happened to him. After Waraq ibn Nufar, he died, the prophet becomes so sad. Actually, let me, I'm going to open it because I know that Indonesian people, they are going to use uh, this video for their own channels. So I'm going to use Google Peace Be Upon Him translation. But after we read this in English first. So here it says the divine inspiration stop. Oof, oof, why? Because a guy he died? Ah, this waraqa he is very connected to Allah. I think Allah he was in, in anxiety too. He heard the news that waraqa died. Allah was like 40 days. He's grieving, crying. You know, what a qaida, you know, and then the inspiration of Allah stop. Have you ever heard of such a stupid story? So, the inspiration and the divine, obviously, Uraqa, he was the one writing for Muhammad. What to say? So, the divine inspiration was also paused mm -hmm. for a while. That's deep. And the prophet becomes so sad and anxiety. Look at the anxiety. Where are you? Sheikh Abdul Samud, Ustaz Abdul Samud, why you don't tell the Prophet of Allah? To say Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Just tell him, man. The Prophet now is so much into an anxiety and he is so sad. Hutan, tadi katanya engkau tidak percaya pada doa. Tadi katanya engkau tidak percaya pada Tuhan. Ternyata di lubuk hatimu yang paling dalam. Engkau berkata, sesungguhnya aku takut, sesungguhnya aku ngeri, sesungguhnya aku cemas. Maka tidak ada yang bisa mengusir, menghalau rasa takut, rasa cemas dalam hati. Ya, yeah, ya, yeah, ya, yeah, ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Ya, yeah, but you see, I mean, you are fooling those people because as you see, your prophet, the, the first Abdul, he himself, he is suffering not only from anxiety, he is suffering from suicide thought. Read with me and laugh. So he becomes so sad, and uh, uh, Abdul Samud he says, "If you have a belief in your heart, if you believe inside you, if you be so, which means if you have a belief in your heart, you can fight anxiety, right? If you have a strong belief, you can fight it easy. Come on, look like Muhammad, he don't believe, obviously. So he becomes so sad, and we have heard he intended to several time to throw himself from the top." of high mountains man that is way bad an anxiety indonesian muslims abdul samud so somad somad his name is somad no way i mean what's wrong with the names we see in the internet yeah you're right i'm reading the name wrong uh, at some time I feel like Prophet Muhammad. I didn't know how to read. So mad, so mad, not so so mood. What the heck, Samud? You made the guy Samud. He's so mad. So mad. That's a perfect name. I mean, look, we have sad guru. This is an a Hindu guy. He wanna teach you how to be happy. And his name is Sad Guru. I mean, I do, do you are you guys are you listening? Sad Guru. He want to teach you how to be happy. But his name is Sad Guru. This guy, he want to make you fight an anxiety and his name is so mad. Like, what's happening in this world? But your name fit perfectly with the story of the Prophet. When the prophet he tried many times to commit suicide, obviously he was so mad. And then if we ask ourselves, it says as we heard means not actually true. Oof, 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 oof. Guys, look how the Muslim they refuted the Christian prince. Brothers and sisters, Christian prince got busted by brother Muhammad, peace be upon him from the chat. Look at the answer and how solid it is. That's deep. Brother, you must be very well educated. Christian Prince, 
it says as we heard its mean is not actually true so the Muslim they say what is not true <laughs> in their book of Al-Bukhari <laughs> and because it's not a true we put it in the book brother I mean this is really messed up religion uh, do you understand people because it's not a true we decide to put it in the most true book of Islam Al-Bukhari because it's a lie it's not a true I mean, do you see their logic? This is a religion. This is a, this is an awkward shish kebab hummus religion. What do you mean? It's true. It is in Sahih al Bukhari, and if it's not true, why you say it there? I don't care. It's you who said that. You see, don't blame me for something written in al Bukhari. Why al Bukhari? Your biggest sheikh. Who is the biggest sheikh? So mad. Or al Bukhari. Who are you? Who are you? So when the Muslims they try to defend, always they try to get rid of anything is embarrassing. Don't the Muslims in the time of Bukhari they said to him, How in the world do you write this? Why nobody asked him to take it off? Because what we heard is what happened. Everything in the Al Bukhari is what we heard. You see how stupid you are? When you say this is from narrated from, narrated from, narrated from, narrated from. Al Bukhari was not there anyway. Do you see, guys, the excuse? Do you see how silly it is? Everything, everything in Al Bukhari is we heard. Somebody heard from somebody, from somebody, including even your Quran. Your Quran, you don't have a book. It's called the Quran, the most popular one. There is many of them. Uh, uh, the, the one from Hafs. If you open to page A, it says, this Quran is according to the recitation, not the book, of Hafs ibn Asim, etc. So, all what you have in Islam is according to what we heard, not according to what we saw. You have no witnesses. So, when a Muslim, he tried to get rid of an embarrassment story, he tried his best, but it, you know, it shows his foolishness. Because this is Al-Bukhari, and this is the number one book for the Muhammadan. And if it's not true, then you Muslims are a bunch of liars lying about your prophet. Because even when you when he say we heard, he heard from who? He heard from the Muslims. He is not going to report something he heard from a Christian prince. You know that, right? Now we continue. Quran are equally valid. That's a good thing. Hold on. Let me take, let me take a selfie for you. Give me a second, and because now we will show you Muhammad suffering from anxiety in the Quran. <laughs> you know, uh, Abdul Samud. This this is scam. He is saying you you can say you can you can solve any problem by saying Bismillahi wa bihamdihi. Bismillahi wa bihamdihi. Bismillahi wa bihamdihi. That's it. Any problem in the world, my friend, it's solved. And this is why those poor countries, you know, their their Islamic leader, they said to them, Inshallah, tomorrow your life will be better. And those people, a hundred years ago, two hundred years ago, three hundred years ago, and still every morning they say to them, Inshallah, because Inshallah, Allah never will. Allah doesn't exist. But let us go and continue. Even though the Muslims are upset because we are showing them what is written in their book. So the Prophet, each time the Quran stopped coming to him, this is why it says several times, not once. You know, we can say maybe the first one was not true. What about the second one, the third one, the fourth time, fifth time, sixth time, seventh time? So the Prophet, he is so suffering from anxiety to the point he want to kill himself. And obviously, Muhammad, he was trying to go to hell because according to Islam, the one who killed himself, not for the sake of Allah, is going to go to hell so obviously Muhammad is not a believer he's a disbeliever he cut his hope from Allah this is what happened to him the divine inspiration stopped so now he don't believe in Allah no more he want to kill himself people will laugh at him because he is a fraud now each time he tried to throw himself from the top of the high mountain 
Jibreel, brother, by the way, Muslims don't have Jibreel. They don't have, sorry, Gabriel. They have Jibreel. He can, he, he, Muhammad, he, didn't have, he cannot even quote a name correctly. So, Jibreel, brother, would appear before him and say, Oh, Muhammad, you indeed Allah Messenger. And then, whereupon of that, his heart will calm down and he will return home. But look what happened now. We have Sheikh uh, So Mad from Indonesia. He's saying, if you say Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, you can fight anxiety and you can fight stress. And you know, you don't have money, Indonesian people. Say Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. That's it. You are going to send your wife to work as a servant in Saudi Arabia. So the Saudi, they will, you know, use her and abuse her. You know what they do. I'm not going to tell you. Your, your government stopped sending, you know, Indonesian women to Saudi Arabia for a long time because of what they do to them there. Good Muslims. Just say, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. You have anxiety that your wife, she is going, and now she will be abused by the Saudi. Just say, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Allah will send you a salary right away. The food will come on your table. Hmm. Now, listen carefully. As you see, this is a proof that Muhammad is a mentally ill person and he is suffering not from anxiety he is suffering from mental illness and Allah could not help him and if you look at the story here the, the, the poor Muhammad he go to the top of the mountain and almost he want to throw himself and then and then the angel will appear to him I mean have you ever heard of a stupid mad person like this because if an angel appearing to him, shouldn't the angel appear before he go to the mountain? I mean, why you make the guy go all the way up to the top of the Himalaya? And then you appear for him. Why you don't appear to him before he go? You know, like you're an angel. And who is the one who sent the angel? Allah. Don't Allah knows that Muhammad now is so sad and he need help? Why Allah did not send the angel before the, the poor guy take the van and take the taxi or take the three cycle? So now Prophet Muhammad is in Indonesia. He is in Jakarta, brother. And now he is very sad, brother. Hmm? Let us try to find the solution. And remind me, I will translate the hadith into... Indonesian language, you know. All right. Let us see here. All right. I, I will choose a small mountain because I don't want to make it hard for Prophet Muhammad. You know, I like the guy. I mean, come on. It's enough what happened to him. Isn't it enough to be a kid and you marry a woman in the age of your mother just for the sake of her money? So Prophet Muhammad, after what happened, brother, and what happened is very horrible, he was so sad and he is suffering from a very ugly, disgusting anxiety. So Prophet Muhammad, he go from his house. And he start walking. Right now he is in this rock. Now he is here. He's climbing. Prophet, just continue. You are getting there. Oh, I can't breathe. And there is no rope with me. Almost I fail. Yeah, here, no, there is here the rope. Put your hand here. Yeah, put your hand here. Now you can rest. And now walking is easier. The prophet is going and the prophet is going and this is a really big mountain i mean he keep going keep going keep going and then the prophet in the top you know like he keep going keep going because the prophet by the way he can jump from here from this spot but no because you would die if you do it from there anyway no the hadith says from the top of the high mountain i mean look at this guy he don't want to jump from 50 meter high and not even from a hundred meter high. He want to go to the top of the mountain because he was the top at that his time. He was Einstein. So the prophet, 
he decided to go up to the top of the mountain, top of the mountain, top of the mountain, top of the mountain, and he arrived, he looked around him, there is no more top, except the bathtub. And now he decided to jump. He said, Allahu Akbar. And before he jumped, Jibreel, brother, he appeared before him. And Jibreel, you know, very, very skilled in suicide cases. I mean, this guy, he is the guy. I'm telling you, he is the guy. If you have a problem, bring Jibreel. All right? So Jibreel, brother, he appeared in front of a prophet Muhammad here. Those are his two wings. He's a flying, you remember, he's an angel. Come on. Okay? So he's, he appeared in front of him, like Casper. You know Casper in the cartoon? Uh, so Casper and Jibreel, he appeared before Prophet Muhammad, and he said to him, Prophet Muhammad, truly, truly, you are in truth a prophet of Allah. And the prophet, he looked at the angel, he says, really? The angel, he says, yes, really? The angel, okay. Muhammad, he said, okay. Ugh. All right. So what I shall do now? He go home. Okay. And now the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He have to do the same as he did to go up. So now he go down, he go down, he go down, he go down. You know, and we are erasing his trace because we don't want the kuffar to know where he was. I like, come on, CIA, Tura Bora, you know, as Zawahiri, Osama bin Laden, you know what happened. So now Prophet Muhammad, he go home. Second day in the morning, Prophet Muhammad, he tried to do the same. I mean, isn't it obvious this guy is a mentally ill? The angel just, he appeared to you yesterday and he told you truly, truly, you are, an, you are a prophet. And then you agreed and you decided to go home. Second day, the same guy, the same Abdul Muhammad, the first Abdul in the world, he decided to go again in the top of the mountain. And again, Prophet Muhammad, the brother, he tried to jump in the mountain. But this time he took this direction. He's trying to, you know, to, to like to make it harder for the angel to find him. So he go here and he took the rock here, took shortcut, highway 67. And he, he take now you know ninety one and seventy eight, and then you know he one oh one and he is here now, and now he wanna jump. And Allah is watching carefully, brother. Angel Jibril he appear for him again. This time Angel Jibril he looked like a walnut. I mean I don't know why he looked like. Don't ask me. I'm very good in drawing, by the way. I was number one in the classroom in Saudi Arabia where nobody allowed to draw because it's haram. So here, Jibreel, he said to him, Habibi, Habibi Muhammad, didn't I say to you just, just yesterday that you are a truly prophet of Allah? Why you are coming again to do it again? Prophet Muhammad said to him, yesterday was yesterday and today is today. And today I'm going to commit suicide. Zabriel, he said, okay, okay, listen to me. I'm going to say to you what I said to you yesterday. Listen carefully. Truly, 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 you are messenger of Allah. Prophet Muhammad, he said to him again, really? The angel, he said, yes, really. Prophet Muhammad said, okay, now I feel better. My anxiety is really better. And now Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he go down the mountain again and he go home. Now, because Jibreel, he knew that the Prophet Muhammad, he is going to do it. He knew what he's dealing with. You know, he said to himself, I'm not going to fly every day, go there on top of the mountain. You know what? I'm going to stay here. So Jibreel, he made a tent in the sky. You know, his tent is weird because he is an angel, you know. I mean, just think about it. Okay. Look like a table. So he's under the table now. So Zibril, he decided to wait for Prophet Muhammad here. And he was like President uh, Kim Jong Song 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 from North Korea. He put the, you know, the telescope in his eyes and he is watching for Prophet Muhammad when he is coming. So he can say to him the exact sentences. Hmm. Okay, I, I guess some of you don't understand the situation until now. It's very complicated. 
We are talking about the Prophet of Allah. And he is the favorite one. This is not just a normal prophet. This is the most important one. So, brothers and sisters, Prophet Muhammad, he is very important to Allah. And now everybody is waiting for Prophet Muhammad when he will climb the mountain again. Kim Jong sing song. Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, Putin. Everybody is waiting for what will happen tomorrow. The prophet he will do it again. I hope he will not be successful because that the destiny of mankind is depend on the prophet Muhammad. I mean, if we if there is no Muhammad, we will get no versions. Is that what do you want? Don't you want versions? All of us we want versions. And you know, you know, especially their qualification. You know, they are very good. So, and you know, like when 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 Jibril, by the way, uh, he tell Prophet Muhammad that don't do it. You are truly prophet. You will see that Kim Jing Song Fing Song. He was really happy. Like oh, finally, he is going home. Man, this idiot. He is not going to use nuke. Alhamdulillah. You know, because people they were worried if a Prophet Muhammad fell in the ground, what will happen? He will explode. TNT inside him, my friend. This is the biggest terrorist in the world. So the story we see in front of us is showing us that Muslims, when they speak about anxiety and how to solve it by remembering Allah, it's a big fat lie because their prophet himself, he was suffering from the biggest anxiety ever and he was mentally ill. And now let us go to the Quran. Ah, I forgot. I'm going to translate this hadith to the Indonesian language. Oh, I forgot that. Okay, hold on. Uh, first, we uh, I will copy the text here. We will use Google Translation. Let us open Google uh, Translation. First, we will go here in this page and we will use Google Translation to the page as it is. So the Indonesian Muslim, they will not say he's adding words, making up words. Translate, uh, no, translate not to English. Translate to Indonesian. Okay, we need to change the language. How we can change the language? Hold on, give me a second. I'm just, uh, I'm going to ask Zabril how to do that. Translate to English. Now here we are going to change the language. Okay, choose another language. Uh, Indonesian. Where is the Indonesian? I don't see Indonesian. Maybe they don't call it Indonesian in the list, what the Bahasa by something. Let us see. Uh, here we go. We found Indonesian. All right. Translate. So now we found Indonesian translation for the hadith. <laughs> now I don't know really where in the hadith here in the Indonesian language it says what it says, but it is going to be at the end of the hadith anyway. So it should be from this part here and down. So I think here it says, Tabi Satila Barbecue Kari Waraka Mingalu Dan Ilham Elahi Ju Bahanati Antuk Samanatara Wakatu. Okay, I mean, it's clear. So Uraq ibn Nufal, he died. And the Prophet he became so so the Nabi uh, uh, the Prophet of Allah he became so sad. Menjadi uh, Sangat he was a lot of Sangat. Menjadi and Sangat as as you can imagine, a lot of anxiety. And the uh, Sadi Karina Kami Tala Manda Mandagar. This is I'm telling you it was really hard to the point he was he he reached the point of Mandanigar. This is like the top in Indonesian language, you know. And you will see here each time. Uh, you know, he go to the top of the mountain and then the angel Jibreel, he appeared to him, as you see here, Jibreel, 
he appeared to him and he said to him, uh, Jibril Naik, what the heck? I thought Zakir Naik only is Zakir Naik. No, this is the one before it. Dia Naik, why Naik is here? What the heck? Zakir Naik is here too in the hadith. I think he was from the companion of Prophet of Allah, or maybe he was an angel. He looked like one actually. So, Dia Naik, Bunaka, Gang, I don't know, like what? Uh, hold on, hold on. I need, I need to focus because you see, uh, I, I'm very good in the Indonesian language. I'm, I'm telling you. But sometimes, where is where is my sunglasses? Because you know, because now we are in the mountain, and I'm reading the heat in the mountain. So let me read it carefully now. Okay, I think now it's getting better. Naik bananu bunaka bunaki bunaki. Okay, bunaki. We got the cake here. So gona rang otarang mantarajonang dariana jibril alkan morkol di handicap dan barakata. He Muhammad Arda among Ulstan Allah. So here the, the angel he told him, You are truly the messenger of Allah. And then uh, when he said that to him, a prophet of Allah, you know, he the lamb, like he became so like a uh, con, you know, the lamb, and uh, uh, Karaban, and uh, the Yaman, Hitayan, I mean, everything into the an, you know, just add an in Indonesian, you speak Indonesian very easy, you know. As you see, Karaban, uh, Karabaran, the Yamaman, Hatayan, Akan, okay, and the Minjadi, Tenenang, Dan, Diya, Akan, you know, it's very clear. So now, Prophet Muhammad, after the angel Zabril, peace upon him, he told him that you are a truly prophet. The prophet, he became so excited, like, hey, I'm a prophet of Allah. And he jumped like a happy feet. And you know, like when they take selfie, you know, he jumped on his feet. They hit each other. Hey, I'm prophet of Allah. And now he's excited and he killed the anxiety. He go home. And then when he go home, right away, he arrive home, he start crying again. <laughs> I am not receiving any information. Yeah. So listen carefully. The hadith is authentic, but the person as Zuhri, wasn't there? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let us go to the Quran because the Muslim they try to defend in a very funny way. What about the Quran? Is the Quran is authentic too? This is Al Bukhari. Stop playing games, potato. Come on. Let us go to the Quran, the yellow pages of the anxiety. Let us see Muhammad and his anxiety. Muhammad is suffering from an anxiety of women. Mm. Hold on, hold on. Chapter 66, verse number 4, and verse number 5, and verse number 6. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, let us tell you what marrying many women can do to you. When the prophet, he told his wives a matter of confidence, one of his wife, Hafsa, when she told the other wife, Aisha, Allah made it known to him. Like, what the heck is that? <laughs> this is the book of God? <laughs> <laughs> so when Allah he spoke to Susu, Susu told Mimi and Mimi she said to Mimi what the Prophet told her not to say to Mimi and the Prophet Allah told him that Susu told Mimi and now look look the, the, the things is getting more complicated so he informed part thereof and left a part like what the heck is that so Allah told him a part and he did not tell him the rest of the part. Why? Uh, the file was missing some papers. Uh, no, Allah was sending the facts and electricity, you know, like is gone. So he did not receive the whole facts. Then when he told her Hafsa, therefore, she said, who told you this? This is the book of God. And this is the book. The Muslim, they say nobody can make Quran like it. Who told you this? Who told you this? Huh? Like this is Allah talking. I am getting anxiety now. So when he told her, 
Hafsa, therefore, she said, who told you this? He said, the all-knower, all-aware Allah has told me. Wow, that's deep. Ah, look, look, look. Look, look at this. Mr. Muhammad Balbuli. Muhammad Balbuli, are you from Indonesia, my friend? Why you don't call me? You don't want to call me? Why you don't call me? Do you like to call me? Are you a sheikh? If you are a sheikh, you know, call me and shake me. <laughs> shake my faith. <laughs> so look, guys, Allah did not tell him directly, but instead hinted at it. That's deep. Hinted. Allah did not tell him directly. Can you tell us how this happened, Mr. Muhammad Balbuli? So what Allah said to him? So Allah, he knew that Muhammad is so crazy. So he told him, uh, listen, Muhammad, you have wives at home, right? Muhammad, he said, yes, sir. He said, okay. Um, do you know a woman? Her name is Hafsa. Prophet said, yeah, I remember. I have one of them. I think her name is start with letter H. Allah, he said, okay, her name is Hafsa. Prophet, he said, well, I remember H. He said, okay, but I'm telling you, her name is Hafsa. Okay, but I remember the first letter is H. Okay, Prophet, forget about H now. Her name is Hafsa. I'm going to give you a hint. So, did you say anything to Hafsa lately? Prophet Muhammad, he would think about it. Hafsa told her. I don't even remember because, you know, uh, I have a very good memory and I don't remember anything, you know. Did you say anything, anything? No, I did not say the word anything to her. No, no, Muhammad, I'm asking you, did you say anything to her? I, I told you, I did not say that. I never used the word anything because like even when she is cooking, if she have, you know, I don't say to her, like you, she said to me, you want to eat? I never said anything, you know, because she's crazy. She would feed me boo-boo. So I never used that word. Muhammad, no. I'm going to give you a hint. Did she say, did you say to her anything, anything, like something? You did say something? Oh, okay. Yeah, I said to her something. What you said? Something. Like, no, no, Muhammad. I'm I'm trying to give you a hint about what happened. Hey, Muhammad Balbuli, what do you mean he gave him a hint? The Quran in the front of you, it says, Allah told him. Read, read, read. What's wrong with Muslims? Allah made it known to him. Hint. And now, why Allah is even involved? So let's look at the anxiety of Muhammad to the point Allah in the seven galaxies, behind the seven eleven, he is busy. This is the God who created the universe, this massive world. He is worried about Muhammad, told Hafsa. Hafsa told Aisha. Aisha, she told Sauda. Sauda, she told Mimi. Mimi told Susu. Susu told Dudu. And now the whole town talking about it. So Allah, he have to fix it. So he made a verse in the Quran. He made a chapter. He sent it to Muhammad. And look what happened. So when he told her, Hafsa, therefore she said, who told you this? He said, the all-knower, the all-aware, Allah has told me. And then Allah, look, look at the Quran, how beautiful it is. You know, the funny is, Mr. Muhammad Balbuli, is asking me what the chapter it is, but a second ago he was answering the chapter. I mean, do you see how the, good, the Muslims are good in their religion? He was answering what the chapter meant, but he do not know until now what the chapter we are talking about. I think you are Ustaz so mad, aren't you? What chapter is this? So you were answering me, we do not know in which chapter we are talking about? Genius, you know, Muslims are genius, you know. Actually, the word genius, by the way, is coming from Islam. He's a genie, and he always say yes. Genius. I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? The most obvious stupid is religion. So look at this. This is God, and now Allah, he told him. And what is the verse after it? What the verse after it have to do with the verse before it? Who's talking now? Supposedly Allah. But this is a conversation supposedly between Muhammad here and his wives. What does verse have to do with this? Why it's there? 
So if you do mm, between two bracket the wife of Prophet Saw Saw short wave, you know the Muhammad Muhammad he never go a long wave or FM, he's always short wave. Namely Aisha and Hafsa. Turn into repentance to Allah. The Muslim they say, hold on, hold on, hold on. Repentance to Allah. Is that how bad it is? They need to repent. But look what the stupid Muhammad he said in the previous verse in the Quran. He said that bad women marry bad men. <laughs> And good women. <laughs> is it is that is that the Quran says? And guys, look at the translation. Look at the translation. Bad statement are for bad people. Look what bad statement we are talking about husband and wife, husband and wife in the religion of Islam because a statement. Hey girls, anyone want to be my statement? So we can have babies together in the future, get married? Who want to be my statement? I'm looking for a statement. I'm going now to go a dating website. No, actually, sorry, what dating site? I'm going to a statement website, looking for a statement, uh, you know, female, so we can have a family together. It says, al khabithatul al khabithin was, well, I mean, how in the world, uh, unbelievable female women she became a statement let us change the translator I mean this guy is getting not a translation for sure he's getting a statement somewhere I mean he is in the state of chaos yeah from now on if you are a Muslim and you see a female don't ever say to her you are a female tell her you are a statement look 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 we just changed the translator the word statement became women like what the heck? Do you see it? We just changed it. We did not change the book. We changed the translator. And suddenly now, women impure are for men impure, and men impure for women impure, and men like what the heck? First of all, where do you get the word impure from? Habith have nothing to do with being pure. You idiot. I mean, what's wrong with those Muslims? Do you know what the pure mean? Let us go and see different translation. This is Yusuf Ali. You remember Yasser Qadi, he says, Yusuf, I don't speak, I don't speak Arabic. <laughs> Even their Sheikh who translated the Quran, he don't speak Arabic. Go watch the video of, of, of Yasser Qadi. Let us go to Shakir. Ah, unclean things. Like what the heck? Look, 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 look. A second ago, it was a statement. Bad statement for, uh, you know, okay. And now, in the second verse, impure women for impure uh, whatever. Now, any clean things. Women, they became things. I know it. I always thought about women that they are human like us. But they are not. You know the thing? If you don't believe me, ask, Jack, uh, uh, ask uh, Joe Biden. You know the thing? So any clean thing, so women, they became unclean thing for unclean ones. Okay, I will go with this one. So how Aisha, she is unclean thing, she became married to unclean one. Is Muhammad is unclean one? Change the translator. Again, this is chapter 24, verse number 26. I will keep trying not changing what I can do. Hey, hold on, hold on. I'm going to learn for, look for Indonesian translation. Where is the Indonesian? You guys tell me, what it says in Indone Indonesian. Okay, hold on, I need to... Oh, here we go. Indonesian is here. No, not this one. Indonesian is here. Bahasa, Bahasa, Indonesian. All right. Okay. Aman, Rabbi, Aman. Here we go. I'm getting dizzy already. Wananita, Wananita. This is... This is two one two one Anita. Hey Indonesian, tell me what one Anita mean. In Saudi Arabia, the word one eight is for a pickup truck. What one Anita mean? Wanita 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 Yankee Jig Dala Adalaha Omatuk Lucky Lucky 
Yana Kiji, Dan Laki Laki, Young Kiji Da uh, It's very easy to speak in you know, Indonesian. Just repeat the word twice and that will, will take you to like somewhere, you know? So, uh, okay. Juanita, Juanita is a woman. So why it says to Juanita, Juanita? Uh, because there are too many women, right? Uh, I, I remember now. I remember from, you know, because I have an accident. Once, uh, once, uh, once I was in Indonesia and uh, like I used to have four wives, uh, to be honest with you. And then one of them in Indonesia, they have big bananas, big, huge banana. So the wives, they start fighting and they throw a banana at each other. And the banana is like six feet, each one of them. So they throw banana and I was trying to fix it between them. And one of the banana was a flying the speed of flight. Indonesian women are very strong, like, whoosh, 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 whoosh. you know, like, you know, in the movie, like, you know, there's a banana, they go like, whoosh, and they come back, like, you know, they have like a curve, exactly the same. So they the, like, whoosh, whoosh, and then they are shooting like Aisha and Hafsa, you know, they are fighting now. So one of the banana, she like, you know, hit me. And since then I, I forgot my language, but now I'm, uh, the memory is coming back. So Juanita, Juanita, because there's too many, not one woman. Juanita, Juanita, young Kiji Adalaha and and took Laki Laki. Okay, you get the point. All right. I think I think we are we are clear in this. So what the what the stupid Quran saying that bad women for bad men, and that the Quran is so stupid to the point it's repeat the same thing twice. You just say it. You just say it, bad women for bad men. So why you are saying bad men to bad women? Isn't it the same? I mean, do you see the stupidity? We just said bad women, they marry bad men. So do we need to say again that bad men marry bad women? As long bad women, they will marry bad men. Already we said that. So why we need to say bad women, they marry bad men, marry bad women? Now, based on this, Going back to the previous verse, Aisha and Hafsa, Allah is asking them to repent. And actually in Arabic it says, Qad sagat which means your heart became in decline and became kuffar. So as long as the Quran says bad women, they marry bad men, and bad men, they marry bad women, then that means Muhammad was a bad man. And here we see the anxiety of Muhammad. So how Muhammad did not fix it by Subhanallah wa bihamdihi? His wives are fighting. Say Subhanallah wa bihamdihi like what the, the Sheikh Abdul in Indonesia lying to those poor people. Do you Muslim receive a verse when you fight with your wife? Why Allah will not send every Muslim a verse to fix the fight between the wife and the husband. Hmm? Any Muslim? Is that fair? That Muhammad, he have a special shrink to fix the anxiety of a prophet Muhammad. And now his two wives are fighting. And you know here, the wives of Muhammad, uh, uh, they are fighting, right? Let's go back. Let us go back a few steps. If you go to chapter 2, verse number 102, who is the one who created the anxiety of a husband and wife fighting? Anyone remember? Who is the one? Uh, my Skype is not open, uh, Riza. I'm not going to open Skype tonight. tonight. So uh, if, if you have a sheikh from Indonesia, you want to debate me? I can stop this uh, live broadcast right away and we can open different title with his name you know we will make him famous and we will make a special occasion for him and shish kebab and hummus takbir so who is the one who created a school he sent down a church uh, sorry at uh, 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 an angel of harry potter to teach people black magic who is the one who did that? Allah. So the fight between the wives of Muhammad and the fight between Muhammad and his wives is the reason for it, the anxiety of it, because of Allah, he sent two angels, their name is Harut and Marut, to open a school to teach black magic so the wife and the husband, they will fight each other. 
Let us go and switch to the Indonesian as long this is made for Indonesian people. I'm going to switch to Indonesian la language translation to make it easier for later for those who will use this video. Where is the Indonesian language again? Uh, Indonesian, here we go, Bahasa. I like the Indonesian language. Really, I like it. It's true I get dizzy when I see all those letters connected together, you know, but still it's nice. Then Marika. Marika sounds like a Greek. I know Marika. You know, when I went to Greek last, last time, I, 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 I have some Pepsi with my neighbor. She was, her name is Marika. And, uh, like, you know, and she invited me to eat macaroni. So, Dan Marika, Managawati, Abba Yang, Abba Kisatora, blah, blah, blah. So, Salimani, brother, he is not the one who became a kafir. It was the shaitan who became a kafir. Have you ever heard a stupid thing like this? I mean, shaitan is a shaitan. Shaitan became kafir. And shaitan is the one who teach people magic. So, and then after that, he says it was the angel who teach people magic. The same verse. The same lines. One says, Shaitan became kafir. Have you ever heard of a stupid statement? They are already Shaitan, you idiot. So what do you mean the kafara? Unbelievable. And then the Shaitan, they are the one who teach magic, brother. Like, what the heck? But the same verse says that the one who taught magic is the angels. The one who wrote this book is mentally ill. And then, Nabli Yatu Harut Dan Marut. You see, uh, Harut Dan Marut. That is good. like there's some music in my ears. Harutun Marutun Harutun Marut. Ankabutun, 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 Ankabut. What the heck is that? Uh, you know, I'm inspired now by the Bril. I just made uh, like um, magical words. So all the statement, you know, I'm not going to use the word women no more. All the statement here, they will listen to me carefully. Listen to me statement. I'm going to make a statement. If you don't behave, I'm going to send Harut and Marut. And they taught me a lot of tricks. I can fight, I can make you fight with your husband, and then he will not pay for your nails. You want that to happen to you? You will have ugly nails, and you will not be able to sharp them. And you know what will happen to you if you cannot sharp them? How you, Aisha, is going to put your nails in the neck of a Prophet Muhammad? How you, Hafsa, you are going to scratch his body because he is evil? You cannot no more because your nails now are not sharp. So this is my clear statement. In the name of Allah, the most uh, aggressive, the most stupid. So Harut and Marut, they open a school of a Harry Potter and they teach people how to do magic. And the purpose of this magic is to make the wife and the husband fight. Look how decent Allah is. I mean, this God, he is thinking about you people. You see, we are talking about a video how to fight an anxiety. Isn't this the title of the video of this Indonesian uh, fake ustaz who do not know how to say two Arabic words together? How to fight in anxiety? Is that how we fight anxiety? We open a school to teach wife and husband to fight each other? And who is the one who do that? Allah. Do you see it? So if they fool you and they lie to you and they say you fight anxiety by saying Subhanihi wa bihamdihi and then we find that Allah himself is opening a school of Hari Buter in Baghdad. Now I know the story of Sandimad is coming from where? Sandibad, Alibaba, Babylon, the tower, connection, connect the dots together. Unbelievable true story. And you know, I want to know why Allah did not send Harut and Marut in the White House. I mean, the, the whole magic is done there. Those people, they change president. They make a new president. They remove government. They put a new government. I mean, they make whatever they want. Magic. Even they can change your gender there. You know, they are really, and now they are, they are thinking deeply about who is a woman. Mm, 
very smart people. Who is a woman? Stupid idiot Joe Biden. A woman is a statement. Read the Quran. If you are confused about who is a woman, anyone is a statement. <laughs> who is a woman? <laughs> you know, stupidity have not have no time, have no season. Muhammad was a stupid fourteen hundred years ago. History repeat itself. In America, we have the most stupid people ever too. But do you see how they lie to you and they speak about anxiety? Guys, do you remember? Do you remember? The video about when you go in the bathroom, you have to say a certain prayer. Do you remember the hadith? If somebody have the hadith in English about if you don't say, if you don't pray to Allah before intercourse, shaitan will round yourself around the private part. If you have it in English, let me know so we can put it in the screen. This is an anxiety. So now a, a person, he want to go to the bathroom. Islam is an anxiety. Islam is a religion make you always worry for stupid things. I, I wish for, for a good reason. So now you want to go to the bathroom. Hmm? And now, I mean, bathroom, what, what, what we do in the bathroom? What is the, what, what, what is the special occasion? It is a special occasion for a Muslim. Anxiety is going to happen if you don't do the following step. You have to enter with your left foot. And you have to say a certain words. A'uzu billahi min al-khubsi wal khabaith. Let us see if we can find the video. According to Muslims, shaitan is in the bathroom. If I search right now for videos in YouTube for shaitan in the bathroom, you will find a trillion video made by Muslims. Jinn in the bathroom. So the Muslim now, he go, he want to just, he want to pee. He want to piss. He want to do poo, poo But he is worried now about what will play with his anus. Islam is a religion of an anxiety. No, not that one. The one you gave me. I want the one it says he round himself around the penis. That one you gave me. I don't think it says that in details. Uh, take advantage. Does not remember. Yeah, they are not translating the one I'm looking for. I want the one where it says he round himself literally around his, you know, penis. Jin in the bathroom. In anxiety right away. I mean, I am home and now I need to go to the bathroom. And now I am worried. In anxiety. What shaitan will do to me in the bathroom? Look, 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 look. Do you see, guys, this guy in the right side behind you? This is shaitan. He is a genie. And he bought a T-shirt from Walmart. Shaitan in the bathroom. The toilet of shaitan what the heck? I did not see this one video. Hold on, let me see this one. The Twilight of Shaitan. Hold on, give me a second. What, 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 what? what? And I'm being excited now. The Twilight of Shaitan. Now look, and right away you open the video, you hear the music, the, the, the water of being flushed. Okay, hold on. Are you ready, people? The Twilight of Shaitan? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to a person, after he was informed that he slept to sunrise, he said, Satan has urinated in that man's ear. Brother, Islam can fight in anxiety. The guy, he did nothing. He just slept. He's tired. 
Now he is really, really depressed. Satan, he pissed in his ears. I mean, let us think about it. I want females who they are married for sure. When their husband, he sleep, bring a flashlight, LED. Remember LED. If you don't use LED, it will not work. You have to have a, like a laser or something. And look at his ears. And especially if your husband is not waking up early. Trust me, he is not waking up early, not because he is tired and you are giving him headache in his life. No. Not because it maybe he don't want to see your face. No. Because Shaitan, he pisses in his ears. Hey, Abdul, hold on. Shaitan, he pisses in his ears. So now he don't wake up. What does this have to do with this? Hmm. Look like in Islam, the ears is where the clock work. He's blocked it! Hmm. I wonder why he stinks in the morning. No wonder you stink in the morning. Do you see the an anxiety? Islam fight anxiety, brother. Now, so now you wake up in the morning, you stink. Why? Because shaitan, he piss in your ears. By the way, he piss in your ears, he sleep in your nose, and he jump in your mouth. I mean, this shaitan look like he is a homeless. He have no place to go except your nose. How small this shaitan is? I mean, how the shaitan who is so small, he can piss in your ears, sleep in your nose, jump in your mouth. He can come to Muhammad in a shape of an angel Jibreel who have 600 wings. Do you think this guy, he expand and he shrink himself? That's deep. When you want, he's so big. When you want, he's so small. Look, he's a shaitan in front of me and he's ticklish. Look like he's so small. He's like an ant. He <laughs> unbelievable. And by the way, do you know that even ants they pray? But this is a different topic. Okay, what else? What else? And look, this guy, I mean, this guy, he looked like a terrorist. Because the urination of Satan is in it. Oh boy. And this is an authentic narration collected by. You must be kidding. Hey, Muhammad Balbul, where are you? He said this is authentic, brother. Are you agreeing or, you know, he heard? Are you agreeing this is authentic or you are thinking this is he heard? In it. And this is an authentic. I wonder why he stinks in the morning. Because the urination of Satan is in it. And this is an authentic narration collected by Al Bukhari. Wow. Why we should cover our Yeah, why? من خلق المسلم ان يحط ايده على بقه يدفع التوبان الاول يعني انا جاي بحاول التوب كده ف طبعا خلاص مفيش فايده على التوب حط ايدك على بقك والا الشيطان يبول في فيك Do you see how Islam fight in anxiety? I mean isn't it obvious? So now shaitan you are yawning Shaitan, he piss in your mouth, brother. Mm. <laughs> and the Abduls of Indonesia is telling them, say, Subhani wa bihamdi, that's it. And anxiety is gone when Islam is the religion of anxiety. So now whatever we do, we sleep, shaitan piss in our ears. We go to the bathroom, shaitan play with your anus. You want to have sex with your wife, shaitan around your penis. You are you are going to do yawn, which is not in your control. I mean, you are tired. Yawning is not because you are bad. Oh, I forgot. According to the genius Muhammad, yawning is from shaitan and sneezing is from Allah. Yes, brother. And Allah, he loved those who, yeah, sorry, who sneeze. <laughs> so Indonesian, why you don't get cold? Because Allah want to love you if you do that. So look at this, look at this. Oh boy, look at this. Now the guy in the video, he says, Shaitan, he piss in your, uh, in your mouth, right? 
but this is a different hadith. But the one we are showing you now, it says shaitan, he laugh at you inside your mouth. So look at this. The messenger of Allah, S-A-W, like his short wave, long wave, etc. Said, the sneeze is from Allah and the yan is from a shaitan. So when you do yan, let him cover his mouth with his hand. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you saying to me that shaitan who is invisible, who can go through walls, he cannot go inside your mouth because you put your hand there? I mean, what's wrong with this religion? In one hand, they say to you, shaitan is a genie. He can go to your room, even if all the windows, all the doors that we are talking about, walls, is shut down, closed. And now you are saying to me, by putting my hand on my mouth, shaitan will not get in? Do you see the stupidity? Do you see how silly? This is religion again and anxiety so now a muslim anything he do in life he is worry anything he do in life is worry because look at this anything is a problem yawning is a problem bathroom is a problem sex is a problem eating is a problem if you eat with your left hand shaitan eat with you do you know that if you eat with the left hand shaitan eat with you في بقك الشيطان يبول حد عايز الشيطان يتبول في بقه مش مصدق اوكي اوكي هولد اون هي جاست سي دونت يو دونت بيليف ذات واي يو دونت اوبن يور ماوث اند شو اس دو يو ان رايت ناو اي مين اتس فيري ايزي يو مسلمز اتس فيري ايزي تو ديسكفر اتس ترو اور نوت Like the shake he said, the shake. By the way, this guy is a potato. I challenge him to debate me. He ran away like a, like, you know, and now he's running away. He was in Qatar. I don't know where he is. He's a coward. So, don't you believe? Why you don't show us? Do yawning in front of the camera. All right? And let shaitan, he piss in your mouth. All right, I think now we are back. Uh, we have a problem here with this program. Uh, suddenly, you know, we lost internet. Do you hear me now? Am I heard? Mayday, mayday. What happened, brother and sister? I was talking to you through the internet, and suddenly, four statements appeared in front of me. One, she was blonde. The other statement, she was with black hair. The third uh, statement, uh, she was, uh, you know, green. The fourth statement, she was purple. And now, you know, and I asked them, who are you? They said to me, read. I said, I do not know how to read. So the first one, she squeezed me. And this is when I lost the connection. This is the first time. Then I tried to connect again. Then the second one, with the red hair, she said to me, read. I said, I don't know how to read. She squeezed me again, and this is the second time I lost the connection. And then the third time, the fourth time, and this is why we lost connection for four minutes. I hope now my true story is a true story, and you believe me, and everything is fine and back to normal. So look what happened now. Islam is against anxiety, and as you see, anything you do in life will bring you big anxiety. So now a Muslim, he is worried about anything. Anything is a problem. A woman, she go to the bathroom, she is worried about shaitan, he will play with her anus. A woman, she sleep in the bed, shaitan can sleep with her. Female genie, she can sleep with the man. This is what they believe. Let us continue. Oh, oh. هتلاقيه بيعمل كده واضح 
والله اذا خيبه كبيره بيستطعم So now he is trying to prove to you that this guy, you know, because he is testing the the urine, so he's saying yum. <laughs> Do you see how the Muslims are so scientific? I mean, this is the religion everybody should choose. So if 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 Satan is not pissing in your mouth, why you say yum? Huh? Hmm? Do you want more proof than this? Yum. Like, I mean, come on, think about it. <laughs> Brother, I'm really, really convinced that you just told us the truth. And now we have all the scientific uh, uh, proof and the reference that this is really happening. And, uh, you know, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Uh. <laughs> look, look, they even have movies about shaitan in the bathroom. <laughs> it's a movie. Movie would like, you know, uh, what the heck is that, man? This is deep. This is really, this is really messed up religion. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Shaitan in the bathroom. Yo, brother. Yeah. True. All of this is about shaitan in the bathroom. Unbelievable. What the heck is that, brother? I'm really, I mean, I mean uh, let us change. Let us see another face of an anxiety in Islam. Yum. Ah. Yum. The moment. Okay. The moment. What? The moment. Ad. The moment. You know, some brothers they sin and they feel bad about it and they go down and then they think, oh my God, oh no, why have I done this? They tear themselves apart. You know, if you've done a sin, the best thing is to do what? You say, okay, I've sinned. Shaitan got me. You got me once? Hey, I'm going to get you three times now, bro. I'm going to get you three times. I'm going to go do my wudu. I'm going to go and do my rakats. I'm going to do my salat. <laughs> so now, brother, you go inside the bathroom. All right? You go inside the bathroom. And now when you go inside the bathroom, you have to enter with your left foot and you have to say certain words. Hmm? And when you say at, uh, certain words, shaitan, he will run and he have durat. Do you know what durat mean? Durat mean fart. Okay. Get up and do the adhan or something. Then shaitan will, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll be honest, you know, hadith of Timmidhi says, it says, yeah, when you give the adhan, the shaitan, he not only runs, but the hadith says, Lahu durat. You know what durat is? Durat is. <laughs> he runs, and as he's running, yeah, his fart comes out. Unbelievable, his fart, brother. So now we have an anxiety from farting. All right. Now you go inside the bathroom. Let us go to the bathroom part. Uh, yeah, here you go inside the bathroom, brother. And you enter with the left foot, brother, and right away you have a reward. You know, you're a human being at the end of the day. If he knocked you down once, you knock him down three times. And listen to the ahadith, like you first, you know what the deen is about. The deen is about getting the shaitan away from you. So, you know, you go into the toilet, you know, Bismillahi Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubuthi wal khabais. So, Allah protect me from these devils. You, you go in there with your left foot. The left foot you went in, you get a reward for that. The dua you... Listen carefully. When you enter... See, this is my video. You know, I, I, I cannot find a video about Islam. I am not in it. Unbelievable. So, brother and sister, you enter the bathroom with the left foot. If you enter with the right foot, it's dangerous. How many Muslims in Indonesia, they enter the bathroom with the right foot? And Muslims, how come those things happen only to you? 
Why Christian Jews, Hindus, Buddhas, they go in the bathroom and they are fine. Shaitan, he target you, don't he? Mm, conspiracy of the anus. Yeah, the anus, brother. Your anus is a target, mashallah. Shaitan will not see you. You're in the toilet, Shaitan can't see you anymore. This is in a hadith. Just to show you the madness of Muhammad and his followers. You, you go in there with your left foot. The left foot you went in, you get a reward for that. Right the away. dua you said, Shaitan will not see you. You're in the toilet, Shaitan can't see you anymore. This is in a hadith, right? If you don't... It's in the hadith, remember. So if you if you enter with the, right, with the left foot and you say the prayer, you will become invisible for Shaitan. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it really amazing? I will make a, a very serious comment about this. Yes, brother. Shaitan, he can't see you not see you you're in the toilet shaitan can't see you anymore that's in a hadith right if you don't say the dua if you don't say the dua what happens is the shaitan not only comes inside but the hadith of tidmid says he plays with your bowels and they say allah and islam can fight in anxiety so now you are in the bathroom and you are sitting in the toilet seat and now your anus is wide open and shaitan is playing inside it. I mean, do you see how Islam fired in anxiety? Shaitan, he play with your penis. Shaitan, he play with your vagina. Shaitan, play with your anus. Shaitan, in your nose. Shaitan, in your in your mouth. Shaitan, in your ears. Shaitan, in your belly bum. I mean, and this is, we are not, this is not including the life problems. You see, an anxiety happen because people, they have a problems in life. Some of them, they are hard, tough. Those are additional anxiety just because you are a Muslim. You are worried, you believe in conspiracy. Anything happen, it is conspiracy. You go in the bathroom, so now a you know, Muslim, he is sitting in the, in the, in the toilet seat. And he feel like something in his anus, like, what the heck is that? Is that shaitan putting his finger there? Muhammad, he said, that when a Muslim, he prayed, just to show you the anxiety. Now you are praying to Allah. Remember in the video, this uh, uh, so, so, so mad, he says, if you say, Bismillahi wa bihamdihi, Bismillahi wa bihamdihi, Bismillahi wa bihamdihi, shaitan, brother, is going to run away. And sorry, your your anxiety will 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 will, will go away. Subhanallah, he will be hamdihi. Muhammad he said, when a Muslim he pray, Shaitan he come from his back, and he start taking hair from his anus, and he will not stop until you fart, and he smell it, and he's and he's and he see it. So look at this. Here it says, if you say the dhikr, if you remember Allah, all anxiety is gone. But what Muhammad is saying, the opposite, what Muhammad is saying, that now you are praying to Allah. You are praying to Allah, not only remembering Allah. You are now under the protect, protection of Allah because you are praying to Allah now. Yet, when you are praying to Allah, shaitan, he will come and he will take hair from your anus. And not only he will take hair, he will not stop until he make you fart and he hear it and he smell it let us see the hadith shall we the book of Faidul Qadir Sharh Jami al Sagir value number two page number four four six here it says in the shaitan ala yati ahadakum fi wa huwa fi salatihi fa yaakhudu bisharatin min dibrihi fa yamudu let us use the Google translation to save time oh, okay, you know what now we are we, we switch to Indonesian so let us, let us make an Indonesian all right so now we are in Indonesian in Indonesian language as you see you see the number two zero two zero two seven. Here it show, it says that I don't know which one it says like what you know you can read it. So shaitan he will take hair from your anus, 
and he will not stop until he hear it, which means he hear your fart, and he feel or he smell your fart. Is that going to make your anxiety go? Or this is anxiety by itself? So now you, your wife, your daughter is bending over to Allah. Shouldn't Allah protect your anus at least? I mean, if this guy Allah and cannot protect an anus, what he can protect? Let us switch to Indonesian, sorry, the English language in the translation. Uh, translate now Indonesian. We are Indonesian already. Let us change the language and uh, choose language. We choose English. Where is the English? Um. <clears throat> All right, here we go. So now we are in the English mood. Translate. All right, as you see, this is the book. This is the book name. This is the, uh, the author name. And part two, page number four, four, six, volume number two. And this is the hadith. Verily Shaitan uh, comes to the one while he in a prayer and he take hair from his backbone and he stretch it out and then he see it, which means he see the, you know, fart, you know, the fart is coming and he smell it. So he will not stop until you pass wind in your fart from your anus. And if that happened, the Muslim, the Prophet, he taught us what to do, that we should continue praying unless we really smell it and we hear it ourselves <laughs> and this idiot Samud is teaching us how to fight in anxiety can you believe it what a bunch of fools this is a religion this is a prophet imagine that the one who said that forgive me Lord for saying this imagine if the one who said that is Jesus Imagine, this is the teaching of Muhammad. Shaitan, take care of from your anus when you pray. And you know what? I challenge Abdul Samud, or Somad, sorry, to take a picture of his anus. If, or you know what? These days, they have a slow motion cameras. Even your phone can do it. During the prayer, put a tripod behind you, expose your anus, and show us. We want to see the, the, the hair is, you know, there's a hair is taken off. Zoom in. Let somebody stand behind you. Zoom in. And I want to see if this is true or not. I, this is a challenge to all Muslims. Who is a Muslim when I make a video? Proving that what Muhammad said is true. And you know, and the easiest way to prove that this is false, by the way, because taking hair from such a location will hurt. Taking hair from your skin, anywhere skin, is going to hurt. So imagine now we are talking about your anus or private part. This is a sensitive area. So if shaitan is taking hair from your anus, shouldn't you feel really the pain? I mean, who is the stupid here? If I take hair from your face, you will not feel it? Isn't it obvious Muhammad is making fun of you Muslims? And since when, if somebody take hair from your anus will make you fart, what is the connection? Like somebody told you that hair is the one in, con in, in, con in control of farting? Hey people, hey women, you want your husband to fart when he's asleep? Muslim women, when your husband is asleep, record him when you take care of him, his anus and prove what's happening. Prove that if you take care of him, somebody's anus, he is going to fart. 
And the funny the hadith say is that shaitan he straight the hair out as we are talking about two meter hair. He straight out. Look, he don't just pull the hair, he have to straight it out first. And then he will pull it out from the anus. So if we want to count the stupidity of this religion, it's endless. It's a superstition religion. Don't enter the first one to the bazaar and don't be the last one who go to the bazaar. Why? Because shaitan, he lay eggs in the bazaar. So now nobody want to go to be the first one in the bazaar. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid thing? Shaitan, he lay eggs. Is he a chicken? Prophet of Allah, he said, don't, if you can, help to be the first one who enter the market and the last one to leave it because in an arena, a Satan standard Satan said, they, what the heck, what this, what, what? You know, you see the, the Muslim, they lie in the translation. In Arabic, it says Shaitan, Bada Shaitan, Bada, Bada, he lay eggs. Why they lie? I mean, why in the world they love to lie? In the English translation, the word he lay eggs is gone. Let us search for different translation in the same website just to show you how they lie. You cannot trust. So this Abdul who is translating this, he said to himself, I'm not going to translate the poo, -poo. This is This is funny. This is stupid. Hmm. I can't even find the hadith. I just, what the heck? Guys, they, they, they took the translation off. They took the translation off, but I will I will tell you what to do. I will pause the link, and from your side, what you do, you you open it with Google browser, all right, and then you click at uh, no click at the page and choose Google translation, and then you will see right away that it says that Shaitan he lay eggs, and this is additional proof. Look, 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 look. I just use Google Translation. Do you see what happened, brother and sisters? Don't enter the first to enter in the market, nor the last to leave in it. The market, nor the last one to leave it. In it, Shaitan, he eggs and the chick. The translation is funny. So don't be the first one who to enter. And this is Sahih Bukhari, as you see. This is the page. So, uh, sorry, it's Riyadh Salihin. So, uh, by the way, this is exists in the book of Muslim, Sahih Muslim. Sahih Muslim, you see? Sahih Muslim. Islam is a religion of anxiety. Because now all your life, anything you do, you are worried. You are under anxiety. Shaitan, he play with your anus. Shaitan, the, the Christian, they want to kill us. The Hindu, they hate us. The Buddhists want to destroy us. The, they want to stop Islam. They want to, uh, to, you know, turn off the light of Allah. They want everybody. And, you know, you see the Muslims, the one who welcomed them is the Christians. The one who allowed them to open mosque is the Christian. The one who allowed them to go in the street, speak about the religion is the Christians. It's you who have the anxiety. If a Christian go to Pakistan to speak the Bible, what you will do to him? All your life is anxiety. All your life is under conspiracy. Your anus, your ear, your belly bum, your fingers, your hand, your eyes, your nose, your toes. All of you, Islam is an, Islam itself is an anxiety. Islam is religion of an anxiety. If we can quote religion. I hope we have a good time together. Did we? And this is my message to the sheikhs of Indonesia or any sheikhs, Arab, Indonesian,
but I, I would like to get the Indonesian potatoes. And they can invite with them the Arab sheikhs to support them. I have my challenge to all Indonesian sheikhs, those Indonesian people here who will download my video. You can cut this part and make it by itself. All those so claimed the, the, the sheikhs, the ustad, I challenge you all together. I accuse you to be businessmen. I accuse you that you don't work for the sake of Allah, you work for the sake of money. If you are really a person who is not working for the sake of money, accept my challenge. Bring people who speak Arabic, sheikhs who speak Arabic, the biggest ever you can to support you. I invite you to a challenge debate and let all Indonesian in the world see your foolishness and your lies and you are just hypnotizing those people lying to them giving them drugs but you don't really teach them the truth that muhammad himself was under anxiety and allah could not help him muhammad himself the quran says to him if you were in doubt about what we reveal to thee go to the people who they read the book before you the people of the book that is a clear sign of an anxiety. Muhammad himself did not believe he's a prophet. And we show you the hadith where he himself tried to commit suicide. The hadith says that Muhammad was under black magic. And how a person he made for him 12 knots. And took Allah one year to take the knots off one knot every month. How stupid is that? So if we say subhanallah wa bihamdihi, that will take an anxiety. What's wrong with Allah? How come he did not solve the problems of Muhammad by saying two words? If it's so easy. And if Allah is almighty, why it take him a year to fix the black magic of Muhammad? Remember, we don't believe in such a garbage, black magic. What believe that Muhammad is obviously either possessed by the devil or he is mentally ill. So when the hadith speak about somebody controlling Muhammad by black magic, that is additional proof that Allah cannot help his slave Muhammad. Because the Quran says that shaitan have no authority over his servants, his good servants. Shaitan have authority only over al gawin which is the criminals. The criminals only. So if the Quran and Allah, he says in chapter 15, verse number 42, only the criminals who follow the uh, Shaitan, you can have control of them. How Shaitan was controlling Muhammad by black magic. And why Allah could not protect Muhammad from black magic? See, Jesus, when he was walking, and the demon, they saw Jesus coming, they said to him, what do you want from us, son of God? What do you want from us? He cast the demon, and they jumped from over the cliff. Muhammad, now he have Satan controlling him. He controlled his mind, he controlled his brain, he controlled his thought. Even Muhammad, he do not he is not sure what's happening around him. He imagined himself doing things in fact he did not. And the hadith in front of you. He imagined himself. This is a report of Aisha. This is Al Bukhari. He imagined himself that even his sex is not true. Do you see it? Even his sex is not true.
once the prophet was bewitched so that he began to imagine that he has done a thing which in fact he had not done if you join the army if any of you ever served in the army if you tell them that you see things which never happened the first thing they will do they will send you to the clinic and the doctor will give you a release immediately because you you are you, you are not good to function you might start shooting people around you because you imagine how muhammad now can be trustworthy that he saw an angel how muhammad can be trustworthy that he heard an angel how he can be trustworthy that he received quran if the guy is mentally ill obviously and if you say this is a black magic no problem that is even more horrible because now the one is controlling him is shaitan which means whatever he hear is from shaitan he is totally under the control of shaitan and then we find the quran speak about muhammad receiving satanic verses yes satanic verses what is left if this is your prophet so who's your fool if this is a prophet of god what we left for stupidity Again, we repeat our challenge for all sheikhs around the world, especially those who are in Indonesia, especially this potato, he called himself so mad, Abdus, Abdul Samad. If you are a man, say yes, and we will show you your size. Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you, and I will see you again. Have a great Sunday. We pray to the Lord. Remember, we love we love the Muslims, we love the Indonesian Muslims, we are people of Christ, and we bring to them love and mercy and forgiveness from Jesus. Islam is a joke, my friend. People of Indonesia, Islam is a stupid religion. It's not even a religion. I mean, aren't you laughing at the stupidity you just heard? In the year 2022, you believe shaitan take care from your anus. Shaitan, he jump in your mouth. Allah, he challenged shaitan and a human being to go out of the space. So who is living in the space? We have a station where we have space men and women. They live there the whole year. They have apartment in the space. And the stupid Quran challenged people to go to the space. So we say to the people of Indonesia, the Muslims first, we as a Christians, we love you. We as a Christian, we want to save you. Your stad are a bunch of scammers. And tell them, if you are not really saying lies, why you don't accept to debate this guy? How many times we challenge them? How many times? I will be willing to call them. You don't call me if you want. Maybe you are big. You are very big. You are God, maybe. Humbly, I will be happy to call you Ustad, who you do not even know how to say two Arabic words together. Give me your Skype and I will call you. Bring a translator with you if you do not know English. We can debate even in Arabic, Ustad, if you know Arabic, as you claim you speak Arabic. Don't they claim they speak Arabic? Okay, that's the problem solved then. We debate in Arabic and when we translate, Kabich, this potato, he claimed that he speak Arabic. I heard him saying Arabic words. A person who say Arabic words, that means he speak Arabic, don't, don't he? And I believe he don't. So if you really, you claim you, you, you are not a fraud and you really speak Arabic, what about you debate me in Arabic? Here we go, a language. I know and supposedly you know so we do not need a translator you can bring a translator with you to translate what you said in Arabic to the Indonesian what do you think so they have no excuse 
after we finish the debate if we cannot do it right away to do like the translation people they will translate we will have people to translate the whole debate into the Indonesian language who dare they don't you want to bet you want to bet that betting is haram this is something I learned from Muslims two Muslims they are discussing what is haram and what is halal and they were debating you want to bet that betting is halal sorry is haram <laughs> so Muslims do you want to bet that your sheikhs are a scam if they are not then they will accept if they speak Arabic here we go I speak Arabic let us do it and then this debate either will bring shame to Islam or will bring shame to the Christians correct the one who refuse is the one who is scared the only one who said he want to debate me is the Sheikh what his name in son the one who offered me five BMW and he was the most funny dummy ever he challenged me to find one verse in the Bible where Jesus says he's a Christian <laughs> so we are waiting for them and we are happy to see a lot of Muslims leaving Islam and I'm really happy to see that number one people who view my videos is Indonesian that is really a very very uh, happy news for me hundreds of millions of Indonesians are watching my videos and they are leaving Islam we are happy for them so love to all Indonesian Muslims and Christian together and Christian be proud as you see Islam is a joke and you are absolutely following the truth and the Messiah he said I am the truth I am the life I am the way I am the resurrection and there is no way to the Father but by me Muhammad he said I am commanded by the devil have you ever heard of a prophet he admit that shaitan he commanded him have you Muhammad he did if you don't believe me the hadith in the front of you and this is very sahih shaitan he gave commands to Muhammad who said that Muhammad himself he gave him command have you ever heard of a good shaitan if he is a shaitan so why you call him devil if he is a good shit if, if, he, if I mean have you ever heard of a good shaitan I mean come on and he is a shaitan and at the end of the day whatever he is why Muhammad receiving command from the devil you must believe there's a good devil now and Muhammad he converted him to Islam the good devil what a stupid religion while Jesus he is commanding the devil Muhammad he received commands from the devil do you see the difference do you see it says here the devil even in the other report here it says shaitan 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 huh shaitan do you see it shaitan everyone he have a shaitan hey everybody and Muhammad shaitan he command him to do good so my friends as you see Muhammad he admit in many hadith if we want to mention them all that shaitan he command him uh, shaitan he control him shaitan make him under black magic shaitan give him satanic verses I mean shaitan Muhammad he is he is the servant of shaitan 
And then the proof that Muhammad was serving shaitan, that he made verses about his penis, he made verses about women to give themselves to him, he made verses to have a special booty, special gifts. Every Muslim can have four wives, Muhammad have unlimited. You know, this is from shaitan, a privilege. When a man, he make a privilege for his sexuality and for his pocket. That is a clear that he is satanic. If he was serving God, he would be the last one to care for women, for sex, for money, and booty. Jesus, he washed the feet of his disciple. He did not ask the disciple to wash his feet. Islam is a stupid, we prove it every day. And if you are a stupid, you want to follow it, that's your business. And don't forget that if you're not, you're not, you yawn, shaitan, sleep in your nose, piss in your nose, sleep in your nose, and piss in your ears, and etc. And play with your penis, and sleep with your wife, and your son, uh, you know, I mean, we have tons of stories. If you have sex with your wife, don't forget, if you look at her anus, your son will be mute. If you have a lot of girls and you want to have a boy, don't forget, brother, to spank your wife seven times when you are having sex with her and call, say, Ya Ali, Ya Ali, Ya Hussein, and then you will have a boy, brother. Don't forget to spank her seven times. Do you see how Islam can solve all your problems? You are a man, married. You want to have a boy. Your wife, she's keep giving you girls, 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 girls. It's time to have a boy, my friend. Islam solved the problem. You make your wife bent over, and you are having sex with her, and now you spank her seven times, and each time you spank, you say, Ya Ali, Ya Hussein. First, she will love it. Second, she will give you a boy. Oh boy, take care. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. 